Vasishta continued. All these, the ego sense and space, etc., have acquired the nature of real substances, though they have not been created at all. It's all just like dreams. Dreams are created all the time. We get caught up in them. We get very emotionally caught up in them. But what's been created? Have the objects in a dream actually been created? These objects which at the time of the dream are so convincingly real, we take them as reality. But afterwards we realise they're not real. The same mechanism which creates dreams is creating our notion of the waking world, which we consider to be more real and more important than dreams. But it's the same mechanism, it's the mind that's doing all this. We've got notions, we've got notions of ourself. You've got a notion of a computer screen in front of you, a video screen. You've got notions of a world outside the room you're sitting in. All that's been constructed by your imagination. It's changing all the time and it will eventually disappear and a new dream will take over. Where nothing has arisen, been created, there everything is seen. Everything is being seen right now in this moment. There is nothing else. Everything else is inference, memory, conjecture. You assume there's something else going on outside this room. You might be hearing certain noises, which you'll say are coming from outside. But these noises are actually happening right here, where you are right now. So everything is happening right now. The whole universe is right here, right now, including all our notions about outside and outer space and the Big Bang and what your relations might be up to right now. Even so, the sages, gods and the perfected ones remain in their transcendental consciousness tasting the bliss of their own nature. It's a happy state to realize that you, don't, you no longer have to be caught up in the whirlwind of stories and beliefs. We have our own sense of being. You sometimes get this when you've been sitting watching too much television and you make what might seem the supreme effort of switching it off and you've got a sense of yourself, you come back to yourself and you come back to a sense of reality which just for a short time can be quite nice, quite, quite blissful even although an element of discomfort usually sets in after a while but not so with the sages, they realise they don't need to switch the TV back on, they can exult in their own being, in their own nature. They have abandoned the illusion of duality of the observer and the object and the consequent movement of thought. Their gaze is fixed and unwinking. So they've come back, they've taken control of their own attention once again. And this attention is an amazing thing. This attention which can flit from one thing to another within our immediate environment, it can get absorbed in past memories, it can get caught up in alternative scenarios, thoughts of the future, it can go to aspects in our body, it can go to the far distance or the near distance. This attention is the most amazing thing. What is it? What is this attention? We take it totally for granted, but perhaps we can turn the attention to itself. Take a good look at the attention and appreciate its miraculous nature. Of course you need to 
turn your attention to various things in order to get on with day-to-day -day living. But we don't need to have it hijacked anymore. We can appreciate it for what, it's, what, for what it is itself. We can appreciate it for what it is and for what it allows to happen. Everything arises within our attention. Though these sages are active here, they do not entertain the least notion of illusory existence. They're not going to let their attention get hijacked by stories anymore. The stories that we are fed and that we support. They are firmly rooted in the abandonment of the relationship between the knower and the known, subject and object. That's one of the stories we're fed. There's a world out there and there's a me here experiencing the world out there. That's a story. We don't need to buy into that anymore. Their life force is not agitated. It is as if they were painted pictures. Their mind does not move, even as the mind of painted figures does not move. For they have abandoned the conceptualizing tendency of the consciousness. It doesn't sound like a very attractive simile, as if they were painted pictures. But they've realized their nature as actors on the stage. And although they'll engage in the drama, they're no longer taken in. It's the difference between an amateur actor and a professional actor. The amateur actor could be quite affected by the sort of roles that they play. The professional actor can engage in any kind of drama and yet maintain their inner composure. They engage themselves in appropriate activity by a little movement of thought and consciousness, even as the Lord does. However, such movement of thought and the experiencing of the contact of the observer with the object also produce great joy in them. Once you realise it's all just a game, you can enjoy it. Everything is a reminder of the nature of things. You're no longer caught up in the delusion, but everything has now become a reminder of the great game. Their consciousness is absolutely pure, purified of all images, concepts and notions. And this just means they're no longer caught up in concepts and notions. Concepts and notions are stories, stories about who we are, stories about the world. We are fed these as part of our education. All stories have their uses, they have their own power, whether religious, political, scientific stories, they've all got their own avenues of influence, but we no longer need to get caught up in them or realise we, no we no longer have any vested interest in proving the truth of a particular story. <laughs>